Welcome to Astrocrescent. My name is Pavan Bharadwaj. In my previous video, I explained how we can download data from the James Webb Space Telescope website and process the image. We downloaded the data and unzipped the files and arranged them in a folder. Later, I showed you how we can bring the FITS files into PixInsight. In this video, I will go over the process that I used in PixInsight to process these FITS files and create an image like this. So let's get started. You might have noticed that I have given a soft stretch to all these applied dynamic crop and then I did the star alignment. For star alignment, this is the process I used. I chose the F200W file which represents the F200W filter as my reference image and then later uh, dragged all other files into this box target images using the add files function. I did not touch any of uh, the default settings here. The star alignment process created registered files like this one here, F090R. It is a renamed file. Uh, the actual name is F090 registered. I renamed that to uh, a shorter one, F090R. I renamed all of them. So let me put that away. After renaming these are these six registered files. And let me close all of them, all of the other ones. We don't need them now. All we need now is the registered files like these ones. The next job was to combine them into one RGB image using pixel math. So first I used a pixel math formula which is given by Galactic Hunter in his YouTube video and this is the formula for uh, RK, red, green and blue. This formula gave me an image like this. After applying the SCNR function the image looked like this. Somehow I did not like it. Uh, I thought I would have to do a lot of work on this. So let me keep that away. What I followed was another video from the Astro Imaging Channel, TAIC. They gave me a little hint to check a website from Space Telescope Science Institute where they provide the description of the filters they use for infrared cameras on JWST. This gives a little hint about how the filters are used and how the filters represent the colors. As you can see in these images, the smaller number filters right here like F090 up to F200W, they are blue or bluish green. The bigger number filters F444W, F470N here, they represent the red color. In between the middle numbered filters like F335M, that's what we have. They are yellow, yellowish green. So what I decided was to use another pixel math formula like this. I'll uh, provide the formula in the description below. For blue, I used 50% of filter F090 and 50% of F187N. For green, I used 50% of F335M and 50% of F200W. For red, I use the higher number filters like 50% of F444W plus 50% of F44, I think it is 444 to F470NR. I did not use the single RGBK expression because I have different expressions for R, G and B. Created a new image and the new image I named it as Karina underscore 2. This gave me an image which is as you can see here and I think this was a better image than the other one. I like this. Again this image was created in pixel math by using the uh, registered or star aligned grayscale images. So I will quickly put these files away 
to clear up my workspace. After getting this image, RGB image, I use the StarNet function with this default settings and created a star mask. This is the star mask and this is the starless image. StarNet process did not remove all of the stars and I can see big spikes in stars, big spikes in stars. And one of the main problems that I can see in these stars, the stars have a, a big circular hole type of thing, a bluish color or purple or bluish color hole in the middle. So I will have to uh, do something about that later. After that I flipped the image vertically so that these cosmic cliffs as shown on the NASA's website, they are on top. From this image I created a luminous mask applied the luminous mask and increased the contrast using the curves function. With the luminous mask here, I use the curves transformation function and a little work in colors and saturation gave me this image. I created one more luminous mask and worked on curves again. And this is the image that I got after working on curves again. Color, saturation. So this looked much better than the previous one. Little more contrast, little more colors saturated and more attractive image. Rename the image and make a clone or you can say make a clone of the image and rename it. So I can go back whenever I make a mistake. And this is my image after uh, the second round of curves transformation. Next, I used the local histogram equalization process. Uh, I made a clone of the Karina curves 2 file, Karina curves 2 image, and used the local histogram equalization function. I selected a small part. I think I selected uh, this part of the image as preview and tried with different settings but the kernel radius of around 190 and the amount as 0.115 gave me good results. You can see the contrast in these areas that became more visible. So let me remove the preview. This is the image after using the local histogram equalization. I kind of liked this. You can see the difference from here. Specifically, if you look at these areas, I have little more contrast here. So let me minimize this and this is the image to work further. Uh, this was more or less my final image, uh, but uh, the these black dots within these big stars that I wanted to take care of these ones. To remove these black dots, what I used was the clone stamping tool. Access the clone stamping tool from process, all processes. Where are you? Clone stamp. I kept the radius at 5 and did not touch softness or opacity. And slowly, uh, let me show you how I did that. This took about half an hour, little more than half an hour to finish. So click on this area with control or command button, pick up a color stamp from here and use them on the black or other color dots. So that the color of this inner circle 
black circle matches the color of the outer radius. So I repeated the process for each of these stars. Apply it and then go to the next star. Pick up the color from here, use it here. Apply it. Similarly, I repeated the process to all the stars with big dots in between, big holes in between. The final image I got was this. And this image did not have any holes in the stars. See, all the stars have been taken care of. Specifically, these bigger ones. So that was my final image. I liked it. Uh, I think I might have uh, increased the contrast a bit more and then saved the file as TIFF so that I could work a bit more in Photoshop. So this was my image, final image in Pixinsight. After working on the image in Photoshop, this is what I got. You can see it is again flipped. This right side comes on the left side. Horizontal flip, horizontal mirror. You can use that from image, geometry, horizontal mirror. That flips the image left to right or right to left. my final image after refining it a bit in Photoshop. Look at these areas where you can see these caves, this pillar type of thing over here and take a look at these cosmic cliffs. NASA calls them cosmic cliffs. Look at all the details that you see in this image. I like it. For a second, I wanted to compare this image to the one on NASA's website. So take a look. This is the image from NASA's website. This may not be a high resolution image, but this is what they have published and look at the image that I processed. So NASA and my image. And you can see much more details are visible in the image that I just processed. No comparison, but I think I am very happy with the work I have done. I hope you like the image. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing if you think that the content is useful or helpful. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching the video. I'll see you next time. Clear skies and bye for now.